goat. <laughs> what was I doing? Um, this is a video on uh, distraction. I know, and so that's why I'm doing it on my computer because this is such an amazing tool uh, that can be so useful in our lives or it can be an incredible tool for practicing poor mental health and building the fundamental skills to make sure that our mind is never doing things that we want it to do. So this video, if you're any, somebody who's struggled with ruminating, uh, you find it difficult to focus, you're often finding yourself distracted, you find it difficult to work and sit down and do the things you need to do, you find the moment you try to do anything, your, your mind is off wandering in the past, you know, thinking of terrible things you did or worrying about horrible things that might happen in the future. If that's something you struggle with and you don't like that and you want that to change, it's really important to look at whether or not that's actually something you're training your brain to do every day. And here's what I mean by that. So I'll use an example of myself several years ago. So back when I used to struggle with OCD and anxiety disorders, here's totally a very typical uh, thing that would happen to me. So say, you know, I'd wake up and immediately I would be on my cell phone. So I'd grab my cell phone and, you know, I might go to the washroom or something. So I'd be like looking through emails, reading emails as I'm on the toilet. And then, you know, I'm making breakfast. Then immediately I'm sitting down at my computer, reading emails, listening to the news, watching the daily show. I would do all three of those at the exact same time while eating my, my breakfast. And then, you know, I'm brushing my teeth while putting my pants on and then going to work and on the way to work. I'm reading stuff on my phone, but I'm also in my mind, I'm trying to figure out this conversation I want to have with my boss later about something that I'm anxious about. My boss, she, she criticized me for something that I didn't think I should have been criticized for. And so I'm thinking about what I'm going to tell her to like show that I wasn't wrong. So I'd be ruminating about that, totally oblivious to the actual trip to work or any of the people I'm seeing on the trip, don't even remember the drive to work, get to work, then say I, I'm in a meeting. Here's the thing, so there was this presentation, this report that I was supposed to send to a client, uh, you know, send to this other business about, you know, kind of their projects. I was supposed to do it yesterday and send it today, but I, I was on Facebook, so I put it off, I didn't do it, because I figured, oh, I can do it tomorrow. But then now, there's a bunch of meetings that popped up in the day that I wasn't expecting. So I'm in a meeting first thing in the morning, but really, I'm thinking about that presentation that I've got to get done because if I don't get it done, I'm going to be stuck at work all day. Already I'm thinking about I have to send the client, you know, an email to hopefully that they're not angry. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to word that email. So I'm thinking about that. I'm in the meeting pretending to listen, nodding, taking notes, but actually all the notes that I'm writing down are things that I'm thinking about that I have to do on that presentation later. So I'm writing out my presentation while I'm a meeting, pretending to have these interactions with other people, totally oblivious to what's going on in that meeting. Then finally, that meeting's done. Now's my chance to get down and get this presentation done before I end up stuck at work all day. But then, of course, I sit down at my desk and, you know, the first thing that pops into my mind is, oh, I, you know, I should check my email because I, I did send some kind of important emails earlier and I want to make sure nobody had a problem with those because, like, what if somebody did have a problem with that and I've got to take care of that? But then also, like, I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe I should just check Facebook because yesterday I didn't do this presentation because I spent all day on Facebook. I want to cut that out, but like if I just try to cut cold turkey, that might be stressful. So maybe I should look at Facebook, get it out of the way, and then I can focus. But also there's that conversation I want to have with my boss. And I'm kind of, I'm thinking a lot about that. So maybe I should go and have that conversation. Then it's out of the way too. And then I'll be able to focus. I'll be able to pay attention to doing this presentation. And, but then of course, you know, because I was struggling with OCD. So I might be thinking about, well, did I actually lock the door at the apartment because there were some really weird looking people outside so maybe they're going to rob it and then I might be thinking about something that happened when I was in elementary school for who knows what reason but my mind has decided let's go think about this horrible thing that happened to you in elementary school or it's worrying about the future because obviously work's not going well it's really stressful I'm not paying attention I'm actually thinking about all sorts of like other books I want to go and write so I'm going to get fired I'm going to be broke uh, everyone at work's gonna hate me, all the clients are gonna hate me, etc, etc. So all this is running through my head. My mind is anywhere but where I want it to be, anywhere but being present. But here's the thing, when you look back at that entire morning, that's what I practiced all morning. I chose to not be present. I chose to always be doing one thing while thinking about another thing. And so it's not at all surprising that after hours of practicing that, when I finally decided, oh, I want my mind to be in the same place that I am. I want us all to focus on doing this presentation. Of course it wasn't. It's so difficult to focus and concentrate when we choose to practice not focusing. And if we're always practicing not being mindful, of course we're going to be better at not being mindful and not being present. Like I always say, your brain is kind of like a puppy. So if you have a puppy and you train it to jump up on you, you train it always to jump up on you. But 
every day for one hour, you don't want it to jump up on you. You want it to sit there. Well, obviously the dog, that puppy is not going to figure that out. It's going to want to keep jumping up on you. And that's what happens when it comes to being mindful and getting our mind to do the things we want it to do and to be present and to not run off worrying about all sorts of things in the past. If you want your mind to be present, you have to practice having it be present. If you want your mind to be present, you can't choose to spend so much of your time training your brain to be in another place while you're in a totally different place. Often a question comes up about how to maintain a mindful state. And I think the more interesting question is to flip that. And that's how do you maintain a distracted state? How do you maintain an unmindful state? Because when you recognize that those are practices, that we practice training our brain to be distracted, that we practice training our brain to go off and ruminate and wonder about things happening in the past, wonder about things happening in the future. When we recognize that that's a practice and we're often training our brains to do that, then it's not surprising that we struggle with being mindful. And what that also shows you, it shows you the things that you can cut out. If you don't like being good at being unmindful, stop practicing the things that lead to that and lead to being an, like, an Olympic athlete at ruminating and thinking about all sorts of other things except what's present. Be aware of how you might be practicing distraction. Because it's not enough to just be like, ah, oh, you know, I struggle with this, so I'm gonna practice being mindful for an hour a day. That hour is not useful if you spend the other 23 hours of the day training your brain to be unmindful.